Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 5 1 Volleyball Podcast. Another Friday, another podcast with Everett DeLorme of Volleyball Stories here live in person once again on a nice, sunny, beautiful day in Toronto. Uh, How are you doing today, Everett? Dude, it feels like summer. Oh, it's it's like, like yesterday and today were those first days where it's just like the sun is hitting the city. It feels like summer. It smells like summer. Like the, the city is alive. It's like I haven't felt like this since like 2019. Since like oh, since like I pre, love to hear that. Since, yeah, yeah. since like pre pandemic. So I mean things are going going well. We had a lot of stuff go down in the volleyball world this week. Um, you know, some crowning some champions in Italy. We got the 25 man rosters for VNL. You and I were literally just talking as we were setting up about how excited we are for national team season. Um, so yeah, where 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 do you want to start here? Well, we have a lot to get over, go over, and the sunny weather hails another great thing, which is national team volleyball season. Yes. You know, as much of uh, as much of the VNL as we chirp on, it's it's a great tournament. I'm so excited for it. Uh, very excited. We're going to be heading down to Ottawa, hopefully uh, together later this summer. So we're going to break down the 25 man rosters today. Uh, kind of some find some interesting omissions, interesting players to watch. But before we get into that, just a quick recap because we did. We have Cucini Lubi Civitanova as our Italian league champion. Not actually that excited in game. Not even that much to talk about. Basically, no. uh, like Leon couldn't replicate his performance. Lube played amazing. Zaitsev actually had a good game. Um, and yeah, nothing to, too much to talk about there. But Everett, how crazy is it that Lube did all of this with Osmani Wantarena injured? I mean, if you told me at the beginning of the season that Lube would have won without Osmani Wantarena, their best player. I would have, I would not believe you. No, ne- neither would have I. Um, although I wouldn't have, you know, foreseen the performance that we saw from Zaitsev in that last match too, as well. Like he was just out of this world. Especially like I only watched the first set, um, and all the other matches I've gone back and watched in volumetrics. But after like looking at the scoreline, I feel like I didn't oh. even after watching the first set and looking at the scoreline, I feel like I didn't even really need to. Um, to me, it, it's so mind-boggling how dominant Lube, Lube was. For First of all, yes, because of without Wantahena. You know, at the beginning of the season, we thought he'd be back by now, you know, and we, they were a little rocky. Um, but then especially how they started that series against Trentino, right? Down 0-2, oh. and then they turn around to completely just dominate throughout, throughout the rest of the playoffs. And it's kind of funny, we were always talking about Lube. Like Lube and Modena were both those teams that could always just turn it on. I mean, Perugia's, Perugia's the, the same way too, but... Yeah, Lube doing all of this without Wantahena is massive. A, I think it's a testament to how good of a team they are. And then B, I think it's a massive testament to Marlon Yant being able to step in and not only like fill that hole, but like excel in that role. Uh, kind of in the, the same vein as like Micheletto we saw last year. Um, so yeah, big, big ups to Lube. Another, another championship. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's crazy that Yant, I mean, I mean, it's we're absolutely blessed with some of the young volleyball talent coming up right now. But Yant, being a starter on a championship team in Italy at what, 21 years old, however old he is, 2021, 20, 22 maybe. That's unbelievable. Like he he played a huge role in the success of Lube. Um and it's the future's looking really really bright for Yant. Uh would you say he's he's probably I mean right now he's he's probably the best Cuban prospect, right? Do you think he's the second best Cuban player, or second best Cuban player after Robert Landy Simon? Not counting mm, the expatriates. No, Lopez. Do you think Lopez is still better? Okay, absolutely. Yeah, Lo- Lopez is like winning MVPs in in Brazil, right? Yeah, right. He's okay. he's he's the best player on the best on the best Santa team in, Cruzera, in, yeah. in 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 Brazil. So, and I mean, I know Lopez is a little bit older than Yant, um, but yeah, I mean, and it's scary that they've got that th- that they've got those two. Um, you know, man, two- I wish Cuba was in VNL. Shout, shout out to Ronnie. Shout, on that out, to, one. shout out to Ronnie. Man, I mean, it would be so they've, they've got good so much power, firepower and just no no setter to set the ball. Yeah, um, that's, so, that's fun. It's like a different, uh, it's a different thing, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, I guess takeaways from this season for Italy. Um, a don't don't declare a champion before the year starts because I think everyone had Perugia as like the top team. Remember the storyline replacing Dragon Travita, who got blamed for everything last year. But straight up, can we talk about Perugia for a second? Yeah, here? yeah. Because, course. like, I think we need to we need to dive into this in in, in all seriousness. Because ultimately, the, the series this this season is a failure, right? Yeah. 
Don't even make it to the Champions League finals. No, absolutely failure. Yeah. Lose in the finals to to Lube after how how many years? Like how, how many straight years is, is that is that for Lube? Oh, I know. How how, how many years of, of domination? And I know it's coming to an end now as as the the roster is kind of getting blown up. But I guess uh, Wantohana now might might be staying and not not be going to Asia. So we'll, we'll be we'll be tracking that. But like Perugia in the off season did everything they needed to. Right? They they had a hole in the right side. Right, so they went out and picked up Rushlicky. They had a hole in the coaching sector, so they went out and, and grabbed Gerbich, fresh off a, a Champions League win. Right, they didn't even have a hole in their P two position, and they went out and picked up Matt Anderson. They upgraded in so many different areas, and were unable to win that that championship. You know, like that that to me. It's something bigger. Like, like there's something else going on at Perugia that we don't know about. That's kind of leading to this lack of success, right? Because it's, there's, there's there's something there. Because on paper, this team should beat everyone. Like they've got the money, they've got the coaching, they got the athletes. Like they have the star power. They had the depth this year. What's what's up? Well, the tactician in me would say middles. They got. Used and abused in the middle in that in that in that final series. Of course, Robert Landy Simon getting getting yeah. that finals MVP, and we saw against Trentino they really struggled as well with Pedrashin and Lizanach. The the uh, other side of me says that they didn't look like they were having fun at all this year. They looked miserable from the get go. Um, I, no, I don't know whether that's pressure internally or pressure from Chairman Cersei or, or what it is, but you know they need they need Alexander Tedesevich back. Like remember the uh, the Block Devils, like that team was a lot more fun, and, and you know was all, also had uh, their issues <laughs> yeah. uh, win, winning championship. But at least they were having fun out there, and that team was not as talented as this team, I don't think. So yeah, I don't know. So, something needs to change. They uh, they obviously can't bring the same team back. Uh, the way things go in volleyball, like the coach might be fun. I don't know. Something's going to happen. We'll see. But they're, 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 they're not, right? We already know that Soleil is going to be becoming an Italian citizen. So he's right. coming off the foreign and living it. They're Fla- bringing, they're bringing in Flavio in the middle. So they're right there. That that fixes their middle problem. Um, all the all the signs point that Anderson's leaving and instead Cement, Camille Semenyuk is coming in from Zaxa, right? But to me, it's, it's really starting to, to put into question... I, are we done with Peak Leon? Man, like, that's, well, he had he had his best game of like one of his best playoff games of his career, like what four nights ago. So yeah, but that's that's one one time, yeah. right? Like, and I, I know he was injured, but like, how many years is this? Is this is this the case now? Right? Yeah, he really needs to win one with Perugia. Like yeah. next next year, he, he needs to win something. Yeah, and either yeah. either the Champions League, Poland Champions too. League, or, or Scudetto. Poland too hasn't won anything since he got there. Yeah, uh, that's that's that, that that's the whole other side of it, right? So like, are we like? Is everyone up keeping? You know, is is Leon is in his like Lewis Hamilton stage right now? Where like you know he was so good for so long, and now he's just starting to to crash off. Man, Leon Leon's almost exactly my age. And I don't want to think that I'm <laughs> past my athletic prime quite yet, although I probably am. So maybe, I mean, Leon does have a lot of, you know, a lot of miles on the body that, you know, we, he's had a lot of jumps and a lot of jumps, you know, on, on maybe not the optimal conditions in Cuba there. Uh, started playing professionally really, really young. So, And like every know. every team he's ever played on, he's always like had a, a high workload, right? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was just overall a bit of a, other than that one match they won, it was a bit of a lackluster series yeah, by, it, series by Perugia. It was after like an all-time great semifinal series both of them. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um so yeah, congrats congrats to Lube. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with them next. Of course, Simone's leaving, Lucarelli, it looks like like yeah. he's leaving. Well, um We're going to have to do a big transfer show one of these days. Oh yeah, absolutely. That'll, that'll be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Um, um okay, so Italy, Don Lube win. Mm-hmm. Not playing in Champions League finals, unfortunately. That would that no. be fun. Um, let's go to another series in another league that is going to be a series extension. Yes. Strepsi. Actually, after after they had been declared dead by everyone, after we had we had ridden on their gravestone, come back and beat Zaxa, the unbeatable team, 3-1. Um, 
to me, this the main takeaway from this game is, is how much of a difference Trevor Cleveno makes. I mean, in this yes. one, yeah, he was awesome in this one, hitting 13 for 23, using his the best the best bag in volleyball, as I like to call it, the best bag of tricks. Uh, he was great. Uh, Tony Udi was great as well. Uh, got some more more action from their middles as well. And uh, yeah, not not too much from from Thomas for now. We saw a little more uh, Rafael Shijimura in this one, uh, but overall, great win for Yastrebshi. Great, great defense. Like, I don't know. I, I really like this team. Uh, ever any takeaways from the game? Um, no, not not many. Um, I didn't watch it all that intently. Yeah. Um, I am uh, I'm surprised to see JW finding success without for now. It seems that all of their success so far this season has been driven by by him, or especially in the playoffs as as as, as I've been watching them. Um, but you're right; the return of Trevor Klevno, um, at least for one match, is is, is huge. huge. He's one of the best outside hitters in volleyball, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, and he makes a huge difference on their team. But speaking of, we kind of talked about this on the last podcast, but the the wings, we or or maybe it was on the nine by nine, but the efficiency from the wings mm-hmm. of Zaxa. Especially Schlifka, Alexander Schlifka, is a lot lower than it was last year. And a lot of that is the Ton Yudi effect. 100%. Um, but it, a notable a notable decrease in level for the Super Finals MVP. Um, do you think that's an issue that is going to translate maybe to Poland as well this summer on the national team? Ooh. Possibly. We'll have to see. But to, to be honest, like a starting spot is not guaranteed at all for the national team this exactly, summer. Exactly, yeah. Right? When you, I mean, well, we're going to get into it a little bit, but man, that like, you could go with like any of their seven or eight outsides that they have on that roster and you're not going to go wrong, right? With Leon and Slivka and Semeniak and um, Fornal, Sh- Shimura. Like the, the list goes on and on, truly, uh, for Poland. Like, I mean, I think the worst one on the list is Lipinski and I, I really like Lipinski, yeah, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, the the reality is is that if it is going to affect him playing for Poland, we won't really know about it because we're not going to see him play. And I guess that maybe that's how we're we're that's how we'll we'll know about it. All right, next game taking place tomorrow. What time? Five thirty, or or is that eleven thirty? No, so eleven thirty a.m. Eastern time, eight thirty a.m. Pacific. Going to be a great one. Uh, no, def- sorry, it's two. It's two forty-five p.m. Oh, you're, sorry, two forty-five. Yeah. yeah. So it's an early one. It's one of those eight forty-five a.m. games. So uh, don't don't go too hard tonight, Everett. <laughs> oh, I'll be I'll be working at ten. I'm, I have to work at ten a.m. So okay. <laughs> well, I can watch the first half at least. Anyway, we're almost done club season. Then we have super finals coming up May twenty-second. That's we'll preview that probably on next week's episode. But for now, I mean, why don't why don't we just get right into the national team oh, stuff absolutely. because they're. 25-man rosters for VNL were released. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but these are actually kind of important this time because they can. this is the pool they pick from to make the 14-man rosters for each tournament, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So if you're on the 25-man roster, you can be on the 14-man roster and on, on the 12 um, on game day. So... And if you're not on it, like there's no, you're 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 not there for VNL. Doesn't mean they're off the national team. I mean, in some cases it is, and I, I guess we'll discuss that. Uh, but yeah, to be available for any of the three weekends of uh, VNL, you need to be on this roster. Um, where, where how, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do you want to talk about some local stuff first, or do you want just want to jump into some some rosters and some omissions and who who to look out for? Let's just go as uh, just pick a player, you know, player that you're excited to watch, and a new young player in omission, and then we'll just take that opportunity to talk about the rest of the team hmm. um so also i guess i can start yeah you, um, you kick us off here so france um france for me is is it going to be an interesting team to watch i mean i i think they're, they're having a great generation of players coming i know that they just won the olympics so that's you know really controversial to say um there's a couple players i want to highlight on the french team though that i hope we get to see uh so of course the uh, Theo Farr has already kind of been revealed to the world after his amazing performance in the French League Finals. Uh, so he's going to be great. But the other player that... So uh, I saw Theo Farr practicing a bunch with the French national team during uh, the European Championships last year. So mm-hmm. I got to watch all the practices behind the scenes. It was pretty cool. 
Uh, but the other young player that they took was Pierre uh, de Rouillon. Um, and he's another super physical, tall outside hitter that, you know, I think is also going to really impress people. Hope he gets some burn. And then the last guy is Ibrahim Lawani, another opposite. So uh, probably T.O. Farr is going to have the have the playing time over him. But Ibrahim Lawani also um, one of the leading scorers in the French League this year. Another young guy, great athlete. This French team is just, the, the French system is really shining right now. Yeah. Um, if you look at, like, this team is so good. I mean, they've got everyone back from from their olympic run um you've still got tony uti you've still got number one player in the world antoine Pizarre. um you have a like a rejuvenated the, the resurgence of kevin tilly has been awesome i mean we kind of saw it last year in vnls <laughs> when it started after you know mediocre season at in chesterna in italy last season and had a great year with tools of course losing in the finals to tail falls uh, montpellier team but yeah i mean i think this french team overall is probably one of my favorites to, to win it all. Like ev- I think everywhere else you're seeing some holes in the, in the team. Maybe not Brazil, but I don't think they have the quality that they that they used to have, and they don't have that that young uh, that young core coming up as much. But yeah, to me, this French team has to be one of the one of the favorites. A couple a couple of notable uh, names left off: Thibaut uh, Rossard, who right. apparently has a poor relationship with uh, French volleyball. Uh, after being snubbed for the uh, 2020 uh, Olympics, he doesn't even follow. Like, he can follow them on Instagram and everything. That's, I I can empathize. Well, that's rough. Yeah. I, like I I personally don't don't think he should have made it because I mean who was it Yasin Loati they took instead? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I I can see I can see why they did that. But man, yeah, that stings. But it's also not their fault. It's the freaking 12 man Olympic oh, roster. 100. percent <laughs> Crazy. And uh, the other one he, he uh, retired, newly retired from uh, indoor is uh, Julien Lenil, who was going to be going to play the beach on the beach. So instead of those two guys, uh, they brought in no, Luca Basic. Mr. Lenil is going to play beach. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So instead, instead they brought in Luca Basic. But I mean, I think on this ro- like French roster, I'm sure we're going to see a, a lot of the guys. Luca Basic, the uh, the French. The French, uh, the Serb? No, no, he's uh, who's? Oh my God, I'm blanking. The the player, the French Jiri Kovar. That's how I always remember. Oh, oh French Jiri Kovar. Yeah. Why is that? Because he's also this like tall guy who just who can't like hit or serve to save his life. But just it's just he's pa- just dimes. tall, so, and he's he's like a tall passing blocking guy. So fair enough. Um, okay, next team I want to talk about here, Everett, is Brazil. Okay. Um, and my prediction, one of my predictions for this year, this is going to be. Finally, the summer of Darlin Souza. We have to see this guy. He's, okay. he's, he's out there, you know, leading the Brazilian league in points, dominating the Brazilian league. By the way, Darlin Souza, Alan Souza's little brother. Um, really fun guy, kind of colorful character, great athlete, great jumper, just like his older bro. We have to see him out there. I can't believe, I mean, it just sucks because he plays on Brazil and they have obviously Alan Souza and Wallace. Oh, I know who you're talking about now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On yeah. Says, says he saw Apollo, and he's yeah, he's sick, and I really hope we get to see him this summer. He's a little bit he's a little bit undersized though. Yeah, yeah but right? man, he jumped. He does leap. He jumped. But he's only coming in at 193 centimeters. So on the right side, that's 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 real oh, yeah. that's real small. Do you think you know, like they like Wallace is back on the national team? Yeah. Do you yeah. think they're gonna run with with him? Over over Wallace, um, yeah. I mean, Brazil tends to bring pretty good rosters every VNL. True. So, so I'm I'm sure they'll bring one of Alice or Wallace, Allen or Wallace to 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 all three. But you know, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, of course, a notable name not here is uh, Douglas, who yeah. is uh, <laughs> pursuing his, uh, I guess, reality his TV reality career. TV career. In, uh, yeah, in Brazil. I mean, hey, yeah, go get that bag. Kind of tells you about the state of volleyball, where you can go and be a reality TV star and make more money than playing than than playing volleyball. But I mean, to me, Brazil is always going to be a contender. It's like Canada and hockey. You know, if there's a tournament and Brazil's there, they're going to be a favorite, um, just because they have so much depth and that they could probably bring an entire B team and still make it to the semifinals. Right? They may not win it, but they could still get past most teams. So. Yeah, I mean, but this is this is like your standard Brazil team. You've got Lucarelli, you've got Leal, who's back after his uh, bit of a choke choke uh, Savic in the uh, Italian <laughs> league semifinals there for for Modena, the kick that uh, just destroyed his 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 uh, season. Um, 
yeah, you've got a bunch of right sides. You've got Bruno. You got Flavio. You still have Lucas. Like, it's still a world class team. Yeah, uh, hopefully we'll see a bit of Rodrigo, a bit of Honorato, Enrique Honorato, a couple outside hitters that that uh, you know haven't gotten too much shine with Brazil in the past. But an interesting omission here, Everett. Uh, the Hawaii big man in the middle who just played in the NCAA championships, Guillermo Voss, nowhere to be seen on this roster. I thought that was kind of interesting. Interesting. Do, but do you think he's just too young? I don't know. Uh, I would assume... I mean, Brazil's pretty stacked in the middle and they didn't bring that many middles. Uh, but, you know, I thought I thought he was one of the... Uh, you know, he's, he's, he was on Brazil's youth team. So I mean, Youth team? Yeah, but... I mean, there's still like a junior team and in, in, in other teams like that. Like, well, he was on the U21 team. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Anyway, yeah, maybe he's just too young. But I, 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 you know, these are pretty big rosters. I mean, there's a lot of room for, <laughs> yeah, for, you know, future national team guys. I thought he was going to be a future national team guy, but I guess Brazil probably doesn't think that way. So, I mean, I, I'm sure they do, but it's not like Canada's bringing U21 guys. Right. You know, it, it, it takes like an exceptional talent. I feel right. like to be coming in at yet at 21. Speaking of Canada, ever did you did a lovely breakdown of the Canadian roster? So if you're I did. a super into Canadian volleyball, definitely go listen to that. Uh, but we can just go over it briefly here for all you Canadian fans. Uh, Everett, do you want to give us a Sparks Note version of uh, what you thought yesterday? Yeah, absolutely. Brand new team for Team Canada, right? Dan and I, you, you and I were talking about it. It's going to be so different to see them without Gord Perrin, without Graham Vigrass. You know, there's not going to be any Stephen Marshall. Arthur Schwartz is injured. Blair Band's injured. You know, there's there's a big chunk of guys who aren't, who aren't going to be there. Brand new coaching staff along with Ben Josephson. Um, so, yeah, it, it's going to be a brand new team, and it's going to be a bit of a, of a let's wait and see, right? Because they're going to be changing things up. It's going to be a different style of play, I'm sure. Uh, maybe not at first, but I'm sure they're, they're going to start building into it. Um, but, I mean, hey, this team is going to be led by by the leaders. you got Steven Marr, who's coming off a low-key, real, real good season in, in Italy, playing for Cisterna. Um, looks like he's going to be headed to Monza next year, so a big, big upgrade in that league. Of course, Nick Hogue is still around, and he's still got the rocket of a shoulder. Lepke had a, a pretty decent year over a, a, at Padova. Van Berkel was real, real good um, uh, for Friedrich Schaffen. Um, but the two, the, the, there's one big omission for Team Canada. No Shawan Vernon Evans. He is a healthy scratch for this event, and he's not not even there. Um, I, I, yeah, I just realized that. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So, and I, and I did, I did talk about it, but just like briefly, like I think no player since like Paul Dirt in the in the '90s has had so much pressure on him in Canadian volleyball as Shawan Vernon Evans, right? And like, if you think about it, at, at like 17 years old, he was at the FTC. At 19 years old, he was playing professionally. And, you know, he was at 18 years old, he was playing um, like World world League, um, nation, yeah, Nations League, World League, whatever it is, right? He has played professionally in some of the, in the biggest leagues in the world already, right? And it's been nonstop, go, go, go. So it's kind of nice to see him. Like I've seen him on Instagram, he's, been doing some stuff it's kind of nice to just see him like relax and have a bit of time off right and the reality is is that as much as people want to talk shit and say oh, sorry for spraying your podcast um <laughs> talk smack and uh say that he's washed other than that one season where he was terribly mismanaged by a stooge of a coach like the year before that scored over 100 300 points for for ravena this year was a top two uh attacker in in uh in japan Right and was scoring like you know Nishida type numbers in 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 Japan. So he's still got it. He's still a world class athlete. Let's give him some time to take take some time off, and we'll see you for the world championships potentially, or if not, at, at another time. Yeah, no, I, I respect the decision as well. I mean, man, volleyball players have an insane schedule. Take some time off. I'm just sad I won't get to see him play. Yeah, because he's he's one of my favorite players just to watch play. When he's on, there's like so unstoppable. But you're right, like yeah, like the schedule. Um, yeah, and you know, like you said, he's he's a good player. Like maybe he's not going to be the best opposite in the world. Like maybe we thought at the beginning of his career with this potential could be, but he's still I still have hope. He's still like a top 10, 15 guy. Uh, so, absolutely. So real quick, just to touch on Canada, there is two guy. There's there's a couple young guys to to look yeah. out for. Um, first and foremost is got to be it's either Xander Ketrzynski or Matt Neves on the right side. Well, I was going to say Xander like what's he been up to? I, so he's he's been in Serbia. 
Um, so he has been. Yeah, he's he's been playing. Or no, wait, sorry, he was supposed to start in Serbia, and then uh, actually he finished the year in Austria. So if you listen to my my um, uh, podcast from yesterday, that's actually a mistake. He actually finished uh, the uh, the nice season. Job. Yeah, in uh, Eichstab. Um, that's where and, uh, and, uh, McMaster, oh, yeah, outside hitter, played. Last year, yeah, where uh, Paslin started Paslin. the season last year, yeah, exactly. But yeah, and had had a really good like help them uh, on a nice playoff run and, and and stuff like that. Yeah, so. but isn't it a bit concerning to you ever that he's still playing in Austria? I mean, he's he's young, but he's not that young, right? Here's what I think the issue with Ketrzynski is: is that he he didn't give himself the chance to like really showcase, and like he had to start in Qatar, right, and then he went to Serbia. And then I think there was some like visa things that happened there. And then, you know, there was some, they were looking at him in France and then he had to go to Austria. But I think this g- genuinely could be a breakout tournament for him. I hope so. He's a really talented player. Um, where's his bro though on the roster? I'm a little surprised Cole didn't make it. I mean, Cole has, it was barely saw the floor this year at, at, yeah. at UCLA. So I, I, I thought people were saying he, he might even be the better brother. He may be, but he's still younger. Yeah. Fair right. Enough. So I, I mean they're still there. Um, the other guy is going to be Justin Louis, a libero coming oh, out of Stanford. He's good. If you yeah. guys don't know Justin Louis, you're about to. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's 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 enough for Canada. Wait, it's going to be very interesting. Can I just be... can I just name one guy I like? Yeah. Who? Sam Cooper. Oh, I watch him a decent amount on the uh, Canadian U21 team. Yeah. I like him. He's I, I like he's, I like he's a physical guy. I like him too, but he's at the bottom of my depth chart. Yeah. Um, and one more question before we get out: Is Stephen Marr un- unquestionably the best player on this team now? Yes. Okay. I agree. Um, okay. So half of you listening are from Canada. The other half are from our lovely neighbors down south, the USA. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much I can tell you about the USA young players, but uh, you know, the, the, I'm surprised actually. They had, they had, other than you know Matt Anderson and Max Holt, pretty much their entire uh, A team is, is coming out to this tournament, uh, including Eric Shoji, Micah Christensen, Aaron Russell. Mm-hmm. redemption potential the summer i mean um, we it has to be the summer of aaron russell right especially with the way that tj's been playing professionally how thomas jayski was this year for for milan aaron russell's like it, it's a perfect opportunity without like without taylor sander there like this is this is his spot to lose right and he's got guys hot a uh, hot on his tail on his tail for it so it, it should be interesting yeah um <laughs> okay there's a couple funny not funny there's a couple of definitely remarkable things about this roster james shaw yeah on the roster back at center back at center oh, what <laughs> this dude has had the craziest career trajectory from a setter at stanford he actually him and uh, steven marr were in their first year together at padova oh really and they had yeah like marr was like a top like a top 10 score they you know padova like finished like six or seven but he wasn't starting Oh yeah, he was. And James James Shaw Shaw yeah. was the st- starting setter, and Mar was Mar was a, a starting outside, um, and uh, yeah, and then he moved. Who did he go play for? Like Perugia or Lube, and like moved to the right side, and then went to you know came home, and then was gonna go to beach, and I, like his career has been everywhere. Yeah, was, yeah, I thought he was on the beach. Yeah, me me oh, too. Yeah. But uh, and then and then he uh, says yes, but I mean, I think that the U.S. is a little desperate for setters considering that both Joe Worsley and Michael Ma- Michael Ma turned down the national team. They turned it down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they talk Talked about, about it. The podcast? Yeah. They, okay. And so did Gage. Gage Worsley turned turn them down too. Give give me the uh, the reason why because they, they not paid or enough or too much time or... To be honest, it, it, I think it was not. I think, but is it, it sounds like it's mostly they just want to do their out of system stuff. And you know, like the like Gage really had a struggling time uh, this year in Bulgaria, Ma was talking about how the most unhappy he was was during like the like uh, like Olympic qualification process and, and stuff like right. that with with the USA and and whatnot. Um, and I mean, why would like they have a, such a good thing going over there at Out of System? Yeah. And they're like they're traveling around playing these tournaments, like really like changing the game in a lot of ways. And hundred percent, I think they'd be they're much more impactful on volleyball as a whole. Um, what the, what they're doing as opposed to playing, but it just kind of shows you how, like, I I'm gonna say the, the this, shine is wearing off a bit on the national team stuff. But I think that that's exactly what we're seeing with Shawan too. Yeah. You know, like, what's the benefit for some for some of these oh, guys, right? Especially VNL, like, like VNL, like you, you're gonna you're gonna be exhausted. You're you're traveling all the time. You're not really getting paid for it. Not to the extent that you are a pro. Um, 
you don't have a life like your life is entirely volleyball you don't get to see your family you don't get to see your friends like like you don't don't get to do anything so yeah like go off take that take that time and it's yeah. Yeah, we're, we're we're pro players here on the five one volleyball podcast for sure. Yeah, um, I'm totally blanking on on this name, but who's the the serving sub American setter who like had a really nice spin serve that, but he had like too many concussions and he had to be taken out. Do you remember? Do you remember this guy I'm talking about? Anyway, if you guys are serving listening to this set. podcast, send me a DM or something. I totally forget this guy. Name. Um, anyway, but yeah. Like James Shaw, and then, and then Isaac Quinn Isaacson. So I'm sorry, I don't know who that is. No, no me neither. Me neither. Okay, um, okay. One thing we do have to talk about USA. My boy Cody Kessel getting the call. It's not the first time. I know, but has, has he ever like played in in VNL in the actual he did last game? Year. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. I'm not 100 percent sure about that, but you could be right. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, last I, year's VNL was crazy. You can, it's so hard to watch every game. Yeah, it was. It it it, it was nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah, ha- I'm ha- I'm happy for for Cody Kessel for sure. I mean, I think he's one of those like journeyman guys who's started, you know, um, and has has come up all, all the way through. Um, I I love in the world of Douglas Souza, you know, taking time off to go to reality TV. I love guys like Cody Kessel and James Shaw, just sticking with it grinding like they clearly just love the sport so you know i I always have a soft spot in my heart for guys like that um there was one notable omission here and maybe uh you can explain uh why he was left off the roster um one sec while i find him and that is i believe he played on power volleys duran or sorry guys as a jordan ewert yeah that's I was a little surprised because he, you, you, you follow the German league more yeah. than anyone I know, and he, he had a nice year with them, didn't? Did he not? He, he did, and he's had a, f- a few nice years with them. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe he just doesn't want to be, uh, in the could national. You, yeah, program. exactly. Could, I could do be. think he's a little bit undersized, um, to to be kind of at at, at that level. I like, I think it's like like Germany's a good spot for him. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, may, maybe maybe a bit of a o- omission there. Like they've got young guys like Oliver. Um, Spencer Olivier uh, from uh, from LBSU from Long Beach, um, but yeah, an interesting roster. Garrett Magatia is still kick, kicking around. Of course, it's, it's John Spira, which means Garrett Magatia has to be on the roster. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. It's going to be interesting for the U.S. I think. Um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting for me to to watch them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to me, James Shaw is, is still the greatest. Like, I, I wonder if he can still dish. Like, I want, I wonder if we're gonna see him. Or oh, if I hope so. Yeah, I was watching some of the Stanford highlights the other day. Man, he he was an A plus athlete. Like, he was crazy. Oh yeah, absolutely. In, in terms of being athletic, like, kind of the prototypical like big, big, strong, like big, big, a good all around athlete. Yeah. Who knows the game pretty well and be like, you know, this guy could be a setter, but just never, never really panned out. Yeah. Um, well, yet anything else there's, for USA? There's, yeah, there's, 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 there's still it's not that old, right? It was like 29, I guess. 28, 28, 28, 28 yeah. So. Yeah, if he's the same age as Mar, then he's 28. He's 94. Yeah. Um. Okay. Anything else for USA? No, I think I think that's it. I mean, like a lot of the the other team is just it's still the rest the rest of their team, right? So. Yeah. Um. Okay. Do you want to talk about Poland? Anybody interesting on Poland? Um, I mean, we've already talked about who's not there in terms of Drizga and Kubiak. Yeah. Uh, so Drizga, somewhat controversially, he's made some statements to the media saying he wanted to. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, good riddance. <laughs> right? Because the reality, like, the, yeah, like yeah. you know, like, disagree. Antigua There's- kicked him off the team leading up to 2014, right? They kicked him and Kurek off and b- because of because of bad behavior. And we saw this, this, and I'm, this is not for Kubiak, this is for Druska, but like we've always seen this team underperform w- with him. Um, so, like, I don't think he's the type of guy that can come off the bench. I don't think he's the type of guy that, that uh, is going to, like, you know, gracefully fade away in, in the background and just be like the old wily veteran who's going to be helping out at practice and stuff like that no, he's, from what i hear he's he's, he's got it's got to be the drizza show absolutely so get him out like there's only one solution get him out give the ball to janush right y- and janush has to be the starter right? he has to be the starter, has to be the starter. He, you you need him to be able to um 
with Poland, it's such a different mentality than everyone else. It's more about managing egos and managing sure. the flow of the ball and where where is it's going to go. You know, because at no point, especially on the outside, are you ever do you ever have someone who's not world class out there, right? So it's really about managing. You know, how do I keep all of my athletes engaged? How do I keep everyone there? How are we running an offense that's mo- most effective? That's not just going to rely on high balls to lay on, right? Like, h- how do we do that? And I think you know we've seen with Zach that he, that he can do that. Um, but we'll have to see. Like, maybe like is 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 getting rid of Kubiak and Drew's gonna enough for for Poland to get over this hump and to finally be a, a, a winning team like this? Yeah. I, I think I think it's going to be a different looking Poland team, like you said. We also, you know, maybe uh, Schlifka is, is also potentially not starting, so it's going to be it's going to be a little different. I mean, if if it was me, I'd go with Leon and and uh, Semenyuk. Yeah, I would too for sure. Leon Semenyuk seems like their best their best bet, um, which is crazy because that could be Perugia next year too. Also, no voice to check on the team. Yeah. But it, it kind of sucks for him because he was actually an elite libero for a lot of his career. But it just his career lined up so perfectly with Pavel Zatorski. He was like one of the best liberos to ever do it. That yeah, they never really got like. I mean, he's, he's definitely he was on the world championship roster. So Zatorski's like, yeah, on this roster. I know that's kind of funny. Eh? That's nuts. Yeah, I, I thought he would take it off, but uh, uh, yeah. I mean, he could easily hand over the reins to Jakub Papashak. Like, yeah, oh like, well, yeah. You, you've seen, you guys have seen how how Papashak is playing in these finals, and it's it's pretty incredible. Um, let's see. Anything else for Poland? I don't one one thing yeah. about Poland though yeah. is that uh, Norbert Huber did get injured. Right. So that could take him out. Yeah. Nor- Norbert Landy. Norbert Norbert Landy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you're not you're not wrong. Did there. you see uh, Salvador Hidalgo compared him to Robert Landy Simon on oh, Twitter? No, that's I didn't know that, that yeah. where it's from. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how it started, but he 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 made that comparison. Okay. I'm like, Damn. And then we jumped on it on the Discord. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Hidalgo's like secretly in the Discord. Man, if there was any volleyball player to secretly be in our Discord, it's 100 percent him. <laughs> Maybe Shoji. Dude, dude's hilarious. I could I could see yeah, Shoji Shoji potentially as well. Also also a great guy. Um. Okay. Australia. We don't need to talk about Netherlands. Well, um. The return of Thomas Edgar for Australia. Oh yeah. All yeah. right. Tommy. Yeah. Thomas Edgar. Dave Preston, let's Tom, go, Thomas, boys. Thomas Edgar, like the best player that that like no one knows about now because he's yeah. just hasn't he's just stuck in Korea, or Japan for the last like ten years. Yeah, he was yeah. he was a blip leading into like what 2016. Yeah, uh, yeah, during the where he scored like 40 points in like, yeah. the qualification tournament. Yeah, it was just an absolute monster. I mean, maybe they'll be a good player. I, I'm I'm telling you, we're overdue for another good Australian player. Like so, someone, I mean, there's so many like. It's just a good sporting country. Like they're eventually gonna produce someone who, who's all right. But I mean, if I can make one prediction, Australia's somehow gonna gonna dodge being relegated again. <laughs> like somehow, on like year five of, of like they should have been relegated, but are somehow still in the tournament. You know, you like, know. can you imagine Australia versus Cuba or Turkey right now? Like, like what do you no. think the point differential would be? Like, 20, oh, it'd be a three zero. Yeah, but twenty five, like fifteen. Yeah, it like would 12. be. It, it, maybe not. I think it would be like seventeen, okay, eighteens. Yeah. You know, maybe they'd pop a twenty. Right, we were up on Australia, but actually, they're they're not. Hey, horrible. Dave Preston, let's go. Not horrible. Right? True, true. DP. Canadian coach. Good, good old. No, oh, that's that's, um, that's, that's that. you know who I might think might get relegated to is Bulgaria. I I was gonna say the opposite. Really? Yeah. Break down why? Because like as we discussed, like. You know more about the up and comers, but like they have Rado Parapunov. Yeah, he's great. Alex grows. I, I, I was about off. to say they they kind of have like almost too many good players at, at the outside hitter. At least they have my boy Martin Tanisov. They have, of course, the best like pro, like player in the NCAA, Alexander Nikolov. Who that's, just, but that's what I'm saying. Like these are young. Who, watching the NCAA, man, that guy has an arm. Yeah, but he wasn't even good enough to win the NCAA. Uh, he's a freshman. But that's what that's what and I'm he was saying. the best player in the NCAA. But that's what that's what I'm saying is that like if you're relying on a freshman in volleyball nations league, you know, like they also have Asparu Asparov, the best named volleyball player. Asparu Asparov, who, who's starting starting behind behind beside my boy Rock. By the way, would you take Rock Mazic or the field to lead the VNL in scoring? 
Uh, the field. The field? M- like, for a few like reasons. Like Zhang or Eugene Nishida or something? Uh, Namir. True, Namir. Right? Okay, like, I forget the Netherlands is Like, so Netherlands is, is going to be there. And, like, if you look at their roster, it's Namir and a bunch of, like, it's Namir and a bunch of role players. You know, like, you've got Teister Horst and you've got Martin Van Garderen, you know, like, all of these these secondary these these secondary type guys. Uh, and you know that, like, their whole offense is just designed about giving the ball to Namir. Yeah, but they don't have a setter. So who's going to set Namir the ball? Uh, I don't know. Don't don't ask if me. If Namir could set himself, that would be a freaking if stacked Namir could, team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing, too, on against Rock Mozic leading everything for Slovenia, so that Slovenia is stacked, right? You still have yeah, Chabul. Have you Chib- still have Earnout. You still have all of those guys. And no, it's, it's time... F- it's time for Earnout to to pass it. There's no way Teen Earnout's better than Rock Mazic right now. No I, way. I, I fully I fully agree with you. But another big thing of why I don't think you're going to see a huge overload uh, for Mazic on Slovenia is that Mark Lebedu. Mark Lebedu is running this team, right? And you're telling me that he's going to allow a, an entire offense just based off of giving Mazic uh, the ball, giving a 20 year old who just led the Italian league and scoring oh, on like 50 percent efficiency. He's, uh, he's going. He's going to get a lot of volume, right? But they're going to, they're like, and like Slovenia has guys everywhere. And that's always been Slovenia. Like, you still have Tonchek Stern uh, out there. Like, I hope they're not giving Tonchek Stern a lot of balls. <laughs> why not? Like, because uh, he's like the uh, high, high volume, low efficiency poster child. You're, you're not wrong. But, the, but what I'm saying is that, like, there's a lot of talent in that Slovenian system, and you don't need to rely on him. So, like, it, it's not like. It's not like a, a Netherlands situation where if Namir doesn't play well, Netherlands do, doesn't play well, right? True. If Rock isn't is having an off game, they can sub him out and they can still win. Don't disagree. Um, let's move on to Italy. Um, kind of a, a, a fun one because uh, you know we get to know the Italian players so well throughout their season. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, our, I mean they they won the European Championships with like their youth team. Uh, I, I mean we'll, we'll see a lot of Matteo Bottolo. Alessandro Micheletto, Zaitsev's on the roster. Zaitsev is, is, on, enough. is on the roster. Um, I assume they won't, Zaitsev and Gianelli and, and friends won't get a ton of playing time. I'm actually really surprised Zaitsev's on the roster. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm, I'm maybe, surprised. Maybe he saw the them winning the European Champions. like, man, I want, I want a piece of this. Well, like, that's what, to- honestly, like, I, I think that's probably what it is, is that he sees the writing on the wall and that if he doesn't prove himself to be able to play with this, with this new age Italian team, that he's not on the roster for world champs. Yeah. Right? Um, but that's the scary thing is that like I Zaitsev has gotten really a lot better throughout the season and he's really he rehabbed well and he's really come back into his game. He's not the player that he used to be, but dude, he can still put up points. He can he can I still mean, put up points. We, we were debating like the I mean he had a great last game, but we were debating for most of the playoffs like okay, let's start like Juan Torreira who literally can't jump and Gabby instead of Zaitsev. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it, throughout that time he wasn't terrible, right? So, but I still think like now, like the season's done, he's going to be able to get a little bit of rest before start start training for VNL. Like I think he wants to take another run at the World Championships, right? Yeah. Like I think he sees this this roster and he goes, the only hole that they have is on the right side, and I see, can see myself making another World Championship run here. Is a healthy firing on all cylinders Zaitsev with this Italian team are they favorites for the World Championships? No. Because I, I think I think they're they they're a team in the conversation, right? I don't think they're favorites. I think the the favorites have to go to France. They have to go to Poland. Um, they have to go to Brazil. Um, past that, I think there's a second tier of, of teams that are, are in the conversation, and uh, Italy is is hundred percent there. Maybe leading those teams that, that are in that that conversation. Because I don't think that Zaitsev doesn't take them into another dimension, like in terms of a class but it adds another dimension laterally so it adds a different look and a different a different way like they can play with a three a three outside hitter system with micheletto and and batolo and uh and 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 uh like like they do a lot at like they're doing at trentino or they can go to a a traditional system with with the zaitsev on the right side so it just gives them another look altogether uh, against anyone in the world right uh one interesting omission on this roster Tommaso Rinaldi, uh, who is, you know, I put complete whiff, by the way, probably mo- my biggest prediction whiff I've ever done. Uh, I had him as like a prospect to watch over Micheletto right before Micheletto <laughs> won. Like, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and not even on the roster. 
but his his you know youth stars and Micheletto of course is there, um, Pablo Poro is there, Tommaso Stefani who who I, I really want to see this summer as well. Mm-hmm. Listed as an opposite, not a middle blocker. No Tommaso Rinaldi though. If uh, if anyone Italians listening to this have a little more info, let me know. Um, but yeah, very strong Italian team in general. I also want to see a bit of Leandro Mosca. Uh, I don't know if you watched a lot of him this year no. um, on Milano, but he's a big, 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 big boy. I want to say like close to seven feet tall. Uh, also a good player. Um, it, like the middle is an interesting. It's their weakest position for yeah. sure by far. But you've got like you've got some different players uh, coming in. Like we've talked about Need Andrea Bargnani in there. Yeah, Gianluca <laughs> Galassi, I think could. I like Galassi. Yeah. yeah, I like Galassi. Yeah, I would say it's like it's it's Ricci, Anzani, and Galat Galassi, one of my favorite guys. Uh, one guy who maybe over Paolo Paolo Poro would have maybe liked to see Luca Spirito. <laughs> uh yeah just i agree irk, just to irk rob <laughs> i mean this is what got to be one of the first ro- times he's ever been left off the roster yeah you're not wrong yeah but poro poro Por- Por- has got even even he's still too young he's still not quite there yet but he did some good things he's got year. some nice hands he, yeah he's, he's a smart smart player as well yeah he he and he's not looking as much of, of a child you know and milano gave him a proper a proper size jersey this year <laughs> compared, compared to modena last year it looked like he was well, swimming in it like they're bringing in a u16 he just needs to get on whatever ricardo spertoli is on he'll start looking 40 years old pretty quick <laughs> <laughs> I, love I love Ricardo Spatoli. He's such a nice guy. Really, really good player as well. But he, uh, yeah, he looks he looks older than his age for sure. But yeah, ultimately, I think this Italian team is just going to be a lot of fun to watch. Like they have so much talent, and it, it they have so much talent and potential. It's it's kind of like planting uh, a mystery, like a, a mystery plant, and like I like oh, I wonder what it, I wonder what's going to grow here. Like I wonder what's going to become of it. Um, and I mean, hey, they've already got some pretty nice flowers of it, like like a world cha- or a European championship. So it's a great, a great metaphor, Thank great you. metaphor ever. Um, Argentina, I don't think I, I might need to dive deeper because there are a lot of names I don't recognize. I guess Luciano Polanski is the easy guess, mm-hmm. or easy pick of someone who might be a big factor going forward. Facundo I, I, Conte, obviously. Like you, they still, Conte, yeah. they still got their guys. The only, the only guy they're really missing is Soleil, and, who's and Decheco. No, Decheco's oh, on there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's there. I stand corrected. So like yeah, you've 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 got all your guys like you've you've got uh, uh, Bruno, um, you've yeah. I mean, I'm not expecting a medal from them. I think that was a bit of a lightning in a bottle scenario at the Olympics. There, they played way above their heads, but uh, still going to be a solid team. Um, Iran is is going to be interesting. I need to, I need to like do a little more like <laughs> yeah. research for Iran. I, I was looking well. through that roster and I was just, like, there's a not a lot of names I do not know on this list. And I know like, especially with Iranian teams, like it's so difficult. Like, you know, we don't follow their, their leagues, obviously. A lot of them playing overseas though. Like we had Saber Kazemi this year. It's true. Uh, Sadat as well. As Fandiar. Yeah. Sadat. Yeah. Sadat. Uh, of course, they, there's a lot Poor. of competition at the, at the opposite with Kazemi, Sadat and uh, Poria Yali. Yeah. yeah it's going to be, gonna be interesting yeah but uh i mean i i i love watching iranian volleyball like they just play such a fun style but what do they look like now without maroof yes that's the big that's the big question right this is the first time we've seen them without their supreme leader yeah i guess javad kareem he he played overseas yeah, um, he would be my guess, but you know, you know, you never know with Iran. I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely not trying to predict any because I feel like Iran is the one team. I'm, I'm like, oh yeah, this is their roster, and it's going to be like four, four different players than what I thought. Yeah, for sure, they have yeah. such a a dynamic system. Yeah. Um. Okay. I, I think we've pretty much hit on every team here. And anything else you want to go over here, ever before we wrap things up today? Oh, you know who my number one omission is? No, I don't. And it's someone that we just talked about this week on the nine by nine. Oh, Atanasevic? Close. Right Sir. team. Lisa Nash, Pedrashinen? Drazen Lubrich. No! Oh, no Drazen no. Lubrich I mean, on Serbia's roster. He's gotten burned by them before. I'm not, I'm not surprised that. So I don't know if that's uh, from his side or if it's from their side, but you've got Atanasevic on there. Yeah, true. You don't have Drazen Lubrich, who you know, we just talked about having such a great season for uh, Lokomotiv Novosibirsk uh, in Russia, leading the show, running them, letting them run all the way to uh, the finals 
upsetting Zenit Kazan in the semifinals. Yeah, no Drazen Lubrich on this this roster. Come on, this is his his time to shine. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, I agree. He's definitely the best opposite right now. We'll see though. We'll see. Um, yeah, wow, that was a lot of names. Um, as the tournament gets closer, we'll be able to break down each individual roster as well. That'll be a fun little exercise we can do. VNL start starting pretty soon, less than a month, right? Yeah. And yeah. what's the date? Today is May oh, 13th. Yeah. So in, le- in like, I think the 13th is the last day. Like the third on the 13th is like the, the Monday after like VNL is done. Right. So we, we, we will we have, have our, have, you know, in a month we'll have been done through the first week of, you know, we should, we should see if we can do some fantasy at VNL as well this year. Actually do it this year. That'd be sick. Anyway, how thank do, you everyone for listening. Code that? Pardon? How do we code that? No, you just need to do it by hand. Oh, so like if you want to join fantasy VNL, which we may or may not do, cause we've said <laughs> we do going to do it every year and then we don't do it. Join the discord. Join the community there it's a great community we're like coming up on a lot of people yeah right? we're, we're every big every volleyball person is in there like every volleyball all, we're coming fan. up on 400 people they're all coming out of the woodworks you guys are great you guys are awesome so much fun talking to you guys on the discord everett thank you so much for joining me on another no another problem. wonderful edition of the five one volleyball podcast um remember to subscribe to volleyball source subscribe to this podcast give us a nice five-star rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. And we'll see you guys in the same spot next week.